We are watching a major court case against the social media giant responsible for TikTok. More than a dozen states' attorneys general say the platform is addictive, especially for the youngest users. Minutes ago, one of those attorneys held a news conference on her reasons for this. Here's Massachusetts' Andrea Campbell. Listen. Today, we're suing TikTok for designing its platform to be addictive and harmful to young people and deceiving the public about its efforts to keep its platform safe. We allege that such conduct violates state consumer protection laws and has contributed to a mental health crisis among its young users. This is one of the world's largest and most popular social media platforms. Here in Massachusetts, it's used by hundreds of thousands of young people. Virtually every young person in the Commonwealth uses TikTok, and then some. In fact, Massachusetts teen accounts make up 150% of the state's total teen population. That's because many users have more than one account. And the amount of time our teens spend on the platform is remarkable. Teens report using TikTok for hours a day, often late at night. And this is no accident. Rather, it's a result of TikTok intentionally designing its platform to keep our young people glued to their screens, all in the name of profit. That platform has employed things like constant push notifications at all hours of the day and night that prod users to open the app using the same addictive award system that slot machines deploy. Infinite scroll, where users can endlessly look through their feed to see new videos, causing them to stay on the app for longer than they otherwise would. Autoplay, which shows users' videos without the user, user choosing to watch. Features that induce, induce a feeling of FOMO, or fear of missing out, so that young users stay on the app to avoid missing out on something that helps them on their feed, that happens on their feed. As one TikTok executive acknowledged, this system exploits children's heightened fear of missing out playing into their mental, into their natural instinct to respond. As we allege, these intentional features are remarkably effective at overriding a young person's agency and keeping them tied to the platform. But instead of actually addressing these harms, TikTok lulled parents into believing that so-called safety features would protect teen users. TikTok advertised these teen accounts TikTok advertised that teen accounts automatically have a daily screen limit of 60 minutes, but the limit is not a limit at all. It's just a pop-up prompt that users can actually bypass. And beyond the prompt, they can use the platform for an unlimited amount of time. In China, meanwhile, TikTok's sister platform has much stricter safety restrictions, including, some mi including limiting some minors to 40 minutes, and that's 40 minutes of use per day, and limiting the platform's availability to certain hours. Now, we all know that addictive social media use has consequences on young people's mental, emotional, and physical well-being. Such excessive time impacts sleep and school performance. It can lead to negative impacts on young people's brain development and self-esteem. It can dominate a young, pe young person's time Stopping them, stopping them from participating in healthy and enriching off-screen activities. TikTok claims that youth well-being is its top priority, but that is simply false. Let's take the beauty fil filters as an example. That platform provides users with filters and effects that can be used to dramatically alter one's appearance and foster unrealistic beauty standards. This is particularly har harmful to the platform's users especially young girls. As we allege in our complaint, TikTok knew this too. Records show that the company knew these filters caused harm to young people, but deliberately chose to keep them because they knew their removal would decrease a user's time on the platform. This case is not about regulating the content that is shown to TikTok users. It's about TikTok's own bad conduct. It's All right, listening to one of 14 state attorneys general who are participating in a lawsuit against TikTok saying TikTok is literally knocking on the minds of young people in that state and other states. 
They want TikTok to have stronger regulations. By the way, TikTok responded just a short time ago. They say they have already done a lot of work in eliminating accounts that are thought to belong to minors. But you heard what that state attorney general had to say that 150 percent, 150 percent of TikTok accounts in Massachusetts represent the population of Massachusetts, uh, the youth population of Massachusetts. And that's because a lot of those kids have two or more accounts. We'll be watching this one closely because we know it speaks to so many people using TikTok in the palm of their hands.